Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Mia Meredith. I'm the program manager for the My Best Self program. And I want to thank you guys for taking the time out to um, attend our workshop. The title of the workshop is Skin Care for Healthy Skin. That is also um, your stipend question. Again, that's Skin Care for Healthy Skin. Um, My Best Self program is a supplemental program, and we focus on teaching youth age 12 to 21 on self-care. Um, we also usually send you guys out to professional hair salons to have your hair serviced so you can not only feel good about yourself on the outside, but embrace and feel good about yourself on the inside. So today we'll have a workshop. It will have 29 slides. Don't be alarmed. Each slide is very informative, and I guarantee you guys will get some real good tips from each slide. Um, you guys will be able to view these slides on our Facebook page um, today, and it will also be on there for you to go back and use as a reference um, at any time. So we'll get started. So our first slide is types of skin. During a skin analysis, the client's face is viewed through a magnifying glass um, to determine what pore size and skin type you may have. Pores are openings at the hair follicles where sweat and sebum are dispersed. A person's skin type is developed either through heredity, environmental factors, bodily functions, or maintenance of skin. The skin may either be improved or aggravated by environmental surroundings, inadequate products, or over or under active duct glands. The main purpose of the cosmetologist is to provide the necessary products or treatments for maintaining or improving um, the client's skin, as well as to complete the service with a, a proper home um, maintenance remedy. So there are four types of skin. Um, we have normal skin. This is well. This is when the texture appearance is smooth, moist, and soft with a healthy glow. This type of skin is without blemishes, blackheads, and wrinkles. Normal skin is a rarity, but the main objective is to preserve its beauty. So that where maintenance comes in. Then we also ha also have combination skin. This skin contains consists of two types of skin, normal to dry skin or outer, um, on the outer perimeter of the face with an oily condition on the T-zone area of the face. The T-zone or middle panel consists of the forehead, the nose, and the chin. So when they say T-shaped, they're usually saying down past your nose to your chin and across your forehead. If you do that, sometimes you'll find that those are the most oily parts of your face. Um, this area may be shiny with large pores, blackheads, or pimples created by an excessive amount of sebum. The outer perimeter consists of the cheeks and the hairline and may either have a smooth texture or a rough scaly appearance. This type of skin requires a specialized skin care remedy for simultaneously treating two different types of skin. We also have oily skin. Oil, oily skin has a texture of appearance of large pores and shine with blackheads and or pimples. An excessive amount of sebum is due to the overactive sebaceous glands, producing the shiny look and possibly acne. The objective is to control the flow of sebum, reduce those pore sizes, and use oil minimizing products. Then we have dry skin. Dry skin is when the texture has the appearance of very small to no pores, shine-free and a taut or rough feel. Um, the sebaceous glands are underactive, making the skin prone to fine lines and wrinkles. The objective is to use, di um, use hydrating products to nourish the skin and prevent premature aging. Skin conditions. 
Along with determining the class skin type, there are other areas of concern that may be present and need to be analyzed as well. A skin condition is generally a visual mal malformation or a deviation from the standard functions of the skin. A daily routine of using the proper skin care re regimen or remedy will keep these conditions maintained and under control. So that's why it's always a good idea to know what type of what skin type you have so then you know how to maintain and maintenance your um, skin daily. Um, we also have sensitive skin. These are the different skin conditions. Sensitive skin is prone to itching, burning, irritation, or inflammation. This skin condition is prone to allergic reactions to certain products. A skin product test is required to check for sensitivity of the product. Apply a small amount of a product inside. You can apply it inside the palm of your hand, and inside the palm of your elbow, I'm sorry, in the um, palm, the inside palm of your elbow. And then you can go back and check for redness, burning, or itching. You would like to, you would want to avoid products that are strong, fragrance, and abrasive, meaning like will cause your skin to be feel really rough. Then this is uh, one of the, uh, this is a really big uh, skin condition that is very popular. A lot of um, youth and adults um, have this skin condition. It's called the corporate skin. It's uh, characterized by the dilation of small blood vessels or um, telangiectasia appearing at the surface of the skin. The small blood vessels or calipares are weakened by expanding but not contracting back to normal size, therefore appearing more defined and easily seen through the skin. Um, this skin condition is usually on the inside perimeter of our face, um, like around our nose, um, around our mouth, and in the creases of our chin. Um, to avoid extreme temperature changes, to avo avoid extreme temperature changes, <clears throat> excuse me, spicy foods, alcohol, and the sun to prevent further inflammation to the skin. Advanced stages of this condition are rosacea and uh, rosacea is how you pronounce it. And that's usually on the outer, I mean, well, that's usually on the entire face. So um, the one condition is the telangiectasia, telangiectasia, which is usually in the middle of the face, around the nose, and also comes down in the creases of your chin. And the rosacea is usually seen visibly on the whole entire face. We have mature skin. It's characterized by a thin, loose, and dry appearance. Everything starts to slow down with age as you do the functions of the, fun functions of the skin. The sebaceous glands do not produce the same amount of sebum and collagen and elastin production was sl or slowed, resulting in skin sagging or wrinkling. <clears throat> the blood circulation is slowed, affecting the regeneration of cells, which thins out the epidermal layer. You, you would like to, you would want to use anti-aging or hydrating skin products along with facial treatments to promote blood circulation. And when they say facial treatments, they're meaning like getting that facial. And if you ever had a facial, you notice that they'll do tapping along your face. That's just doing something to make your blood flow better under your skin, which could um, prevent, use, be used as a prevention. Then we have sun damaged or hyperpigmentated uh, skin. It's characterized by patched or pigment skin appearing light to dark brown. Treatments usually consist of mild exfoliation and use of sunscreens to avoid further damage. Refer clients to a medical care professional for other intensive skin treatments. Um, I really love this slide. So this slide compares the different types of uh, skin color. So um, in this uh, graph, they use, excuse me, Caucasian skin, Asian skin, African American skin, and Hispanic skin. So if you notice, um, as far as the skin shedding, um, Caucasian contains no. Caucasian skin has no melanin. 
um, as Asian, African American, and Hispanic all contain um, melanin. Um, then we have the shedding of skin. Skin sheds at an average rate in Caucasian skin, as well as Asian skin and Hispanic skin. Now, African American skin is a, has uh, sheds at a slower rate, and that's more because we have thin skin, dead skin cell buildup. Then we have the stratum cranium layer, which is thinner in Caucasian skin but is much thicker in Asian, African American, and Hispanic skin. Then Caucasian skin ages faster. Asian skin, African American skin, Hispanic skin is slow um, as far as aging. So this is kind of a question that a lot of African American people cannot believe. Um, our skin can sunburn. The only skin that doesn't sunburn is Asian skin and Hispanic skin. Uh, rarely, uh, rarely has show signs of sunburn, but um, Caucasian skin easily uh, has sunburn. <clears throat> then you have the Caucasian skin, which is slower in melanin production. Asian skin has medium melanin production, and African American and Hispanic. Um, we have faster melanin production. Then we also have larger pores in Asian and African American skin, and we have common T zone appearance in Hispanic and Caucasian. Um, they have more uh, pore openings, varying pore openings. So we know that school right now should be ending because school is out, not because of the pandemic. But we do know that summer is approaching. Um, the weather is warming up. The pools are going to open. But that doesn't mean skin care can stop. Skin is super sensitive in the sun and is easily damaged. Skin cancers like melanoma and sunspots can present themselves at any time in your life. Here's some of the easy summer skin kits. Um, on the next couple slides, um, we'll show some easy summer skin care tips. Um, for the youth that it's very good um, for helping you keep your skin healthy throughout the summer months. So we have <clears throat> sunscreen. Sunscreen is the most important part of the summer. And even tan is nice and even tan is nice, but for going sunscreen is uh, is not. A sunscreen at least SPF 15 is recommended by the CDC on a regular basis, especially in summer. You should be wearing sunscreen every day, even when it's cloudy, raining, um, and the sun is not peaking. You still would want to put on sunscreen. Experts recommend reapplication every two hours, and it can be hard to remember, so it might help to set an alarm. Some makeup, such as L'Oreal Infallible Grow Glow foundation and most BB creams are safe to use on their own. If a cosmetic doesn't have at least SPF 15 in it, wear a sunscreen underneath your primer. Use a lip balm with SPF in it as well. Your lips are just as important as any other skin. Don't forget your scalp either. When you stand the sun, your scalp is just as, as sensitive, if not more sensitive than the rest of the rest of you. A hair sunscreen and hats are recommended. <clears throat> um, for African American, a sunscreen that we can use is before going out to a beach in the sun, um, to a pool, you can put conditioner on your scalp and through your hair just to protect your hair from the sun. I know a lot of the times when I'm out at the beach or, you know, out for out at the pool having fun. I'll notice after a couple weeks of that that my hair color changes to a uh, brown, brownish color. It's not because, uh, you know, the sun wanted to give me a nice color treatment. It's because the sun actually fried and burnt my hair. <laughs> no matter how dark or light your skin is, the sun can have a negative effect. A, a sunscreen with 
um, Neutrogena Ultra Sheen will work for anyone of any skin tone without causing a white cast while, when drying. Washing your face at the end of each day is just as important as sunscreen. It's important to get sweat and sunscreen off every single day. If you exfoliate nightly, cut back to once or twice a week or switch to a gentle scrub like Simple Brand Cleanser, removing away the top layer of your skin can make your skin overly sensitive to the sun. So um, any type of exfoliant uh, nightly treatment, that's usually the cleansers that have a little bit of um, a little, you'll feel little beads inside of it when you're scrubbing or washing your face, which is usually very good to do, especially if you have over oily skin and a lot of acne. But in the summertime, you want to cut down on it because that those things that's scratching your face is usually taking that uh, top layer of skin off of your face, and it's making you more subjective to um, burning from the sun. Applying less moisturizer at night can let your skin breathe. A heavier moisturizer is great for the dry winter, but the summer calls for a lighter application. A lightweight moisturizer will soak in and settle faster. Hydrate. Next, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Following the eight cups of water a day is usually exhausting and hard to follow. During the summer, it's more important than ever to stay hydrated. Keep your skin and body in check and, and prevent dehydration, improve skin, and improve energy levels. Aside from protecting your skin, wearing UV-blocking sunglasses can help protect your eyes from damage. Um, did you know the sun can irreversibly damage your eyes as well as your skin? Wearing hats and glasses can help prevent basal skin cancer in the eye and nose area. Basal, I'm sorry, cell carcinoma. Carcinoma the most commonly occurring skin cancer in the eyes and nose area. Having a good general skin care routine is so important for us as teens, but taking care during the summer is even more crucial. So this is very, very interesting, y'all. So I was very intrigued by this. There's 12 best foods for healthy skin. Nutrition is important for health. An unhealthy diet can damage your metabolism, causing weight gain and even hurt organs such as your heart and liver. But what you eat also impacts another organ, your skin. As scientists learn more about diet and the body, it's increasingly clear that what you eat can significantly affect the health and aging of your skin. Sorry about that. So the fatty fish also helps fight inflammatory and, auto and autoimmune conditions affecting your skin, such as psoriasis and lupus. Um, fatty fish is also a source, a good source of vitamin E, one of the most important an antioxidants for your skin, which is one of the most important antioxidants for your skin. Um, I do buy at Giant Eagle. I mean, Giant Eagle sells it as well as Walmart. Um, it's a vitamin N E cream that um, you can use daily um, with, that helps uh, your skin um, I use it at least two times a day. It's very inexpensive. Um, I usually put a thin layer in on in the summer, the summer months, and I usually put a heavier amount on in the winter months. Um, also, getting enough vitamin E is essential for helping to protect your skin against damage from free radicals and inflammation. Seafood can be a source of high-quality protein, which is needed for maintaining the strength and integrity of your skin. Avocados. I know avocados are not always the best type of food we like to eat. I really have to mix a whole lot of other things with it for me to be able to eat it. But avocados are high in healthy fats. These fats benefit many functions in your body, including the health of your skin. Getting enough of these fats is essential to help keep skin flexible and moisturized. Um, one study involving over 700 women found that a high intake of total fat, especially the types of healthy fats found in avocados, was associated with more supply, uh, springy skin. Um, avocados is a good source of vitamin E. 
um, important antioxidant that helps to protect your skin from oxidative damage. Um, your skin needs it to create collagen, which is the main structural protein that keeps your skin strong and healthy. Um, vitamin, vitamin C deficiency is rare these days, but common symptoms include dry, rough, and scaly skin that tends to bruise easily. Vitamin C is also an antioxidant that helps to protect your skin from oxidative um, damage caused by the sun and the environment, which uh, leads to signs of aging. Then we have walnuts. They are a good source of essential fatty acids, which are fats that your body can not make itself. Walnut, walnuts are richer than most other nuts in both omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. A diet too high in omega-6 fats may promote inflammation, including inflammatory conditions of your skin like psoriasis. On another hand, omega-3 fats produ reduce inflammation in your body, including in your, including in your skin. Um, walnuts may help fight the potential inflammation Excuse me. Inflammatory response to excessive omega-6. What's more, what is more, walnuts contain other nutrition that your skin needs to function properly and stay healthy. Sunflower seeds. I love sunflower seeds. In general, nuts and seeds are good sources of skin-boosting nutrients. Sunflower seeds are an excellent example. One ounce of sunflower seed packs 49% of the DV for vitamin E, 41% of the DV for selenium, 14% of the DV for zinc, and 5.5 grams of protein. Sweet potatoes. I bet we all ate a lot of sweet potatoes and yams and uh, yesterday for Easter. Sweet potato functions as a pro-vitamin A, which means it can be converted into vitamin A in your body. Uh, Beta-carotene carotene, beta is found in oranges and vegetables such as carrots, spinach, and sweet potatoes. Um, six times of the DV of vitamin... Um, sorry, I lost where I was at. Uh, carotenoids like... Uh, beta carotene help keep your skin healthy by acting as a natural sunblock. Um, this may also prevent sunburn, cell death, and dry, wrinkled skin. A warm orange, uh, interestingly, high amounts of beta carotene may also add a warm orange color to your skin, contributing to an overall healthy appearance. Uh, then we had red, we have red or yellow bell peppers. Like sweet potatoes, bell peppers are an excellent source of beta carotene, which your body converts into vitamin A. Um, it's the best source of vitamin C necessary for creating the protein collage, which keeps skin firm and strong. Broccoli. Broccoli is full of many vitamins and minerals important for skin health, including zinc, vitamin A, and vitamin C. Um, it may even have anti-cancer uh, boost. It may even have anti-cancer um, effects, including, including on some types of skin cancer. Um, we also have sulforaphane so is also a powerful protective agent against sun damage. Tomatoes. Tomatoes are a great source of vitamin C and contain all of the major, major carotenoids, um, including uh, lysopene. Uh, beta carotene, lutein, and lycopene have been shown to protect your skin against damage from the sun. They may also help prevent uh, wrinkles. They are also excellent for maintaining healthy skin. Soy. Soy contains isoflavones, 
I can't never get that right. ISO slave zones. A, cat, a category of plant compounds that can either mimic or block estrogen in your body. Um, one small study involving middle-aged women found that eating soy isoflavones every day for 8 to 12 weeks reduced fine wrinkles and improved skin elasticity. Then we have dark chocolate. I bet everyone a lot is excited about hair and dark chocolate or any chocolate. Is good for your skin because we all want to find reasons to eat more chocolate. So if you need one more reason to eat chocolate, here it is. The effects of cocoa on your skin are pretty phenomenal. After 6 to 12 weeks of consuming a cocoa powder high in antioxidants each day, participate, participants in one study experienced thicker, more hydrated skin, uh, less rough and scaly, less sensitive to sunburn, and had better blood flow which brings more nutri nutrients to your skin. Another study found that eating 20 grams of high antioxidant uh, dark chocolate per day could allow your skin to withstand over twice as much UV radiation before burning versus eating low antioxidant uh, chocolate. Green tea. Green tea. Green tea may help to protect your skin from damage and aging. Um, like several other antioxidant-containing contain foods, green tea can help protect your skin against sun damage. One 12-week study involving 60 women found that drinking green tea daily could reduce redness from sun exposure by up to 25%. Green tea also improved the moisture, roughness, thickness, and elasticity of their skin. While green tea is a great choice for healthy skin, you may want to avoid drinking your tea with milk. There is evidence that milk can reduce the efforts of green tea's uh, antioxidants. Red grapes. Red grapes are famous for containing uh, resveratrol, a compound that comes from skin of red grapes. Um, resveratrol. Resveratrol is credited with a wide range of health benefits. Among them is reducing the effects of aging. Um, this beneficial compound is also found in red wine. Unfortunately, there's not much evidence that an amount of resveratrol you get from a glass of red wine is enough to impact your skin. Um, but we highly, highly, highly recommend that you um, do not drink too much red wine just to improve your skin because as we all know too much alcohol is never good for the body then the last the last I believe four slides just gives you a summary of the 12 best foods for your healthy skin um, it also um, gives you some key points for eat for the reasons why each one is good for your skin um, you guys can go over those last four slides um, on your own um, or use it to go back as a reference um, at any time. Again, all of these slides will be on um, the Facebook page um, for you to use at your own, um, um, use on your own. Um, I just want to encourage you guys to stay safe um, and also demonstrate a lot of social distancing through this um, crisis that we're all dealing with. Um, I appreciate you all for attending the virtual My Best Self workshop. I hope that some of these tips and techniques are helpful for you. Um, please join us for our next one, which will be in two weeks. Um, right now what we'll do is we'll open up our live page for questions and answers. Um, you guys can also um, for the ones that don't know about the My Best Self program. Um, you can ask any questions you want about the program. You can inquire how to get supplies. Um, our program, again, is for 12, ages 12 to 21. And we also have a sister program, which is called the KEEP program. Um, that program services um, children 12 and under, um, 
during the live, um, I can give you guys some information on how to contact the KEEP program if you um, have little ones, little ones that you are in need of um, resources for. I thank you so much, and I look forward to um, getting some questions and getting some answers to you guys on our live. Thank you.